This story is depressing for more reasons than one. Even if it did take place almost 10 years ago, I still feel for all the victims involved and I send my love and best wishes and blessings. Social media is a savage and lawless place. Behind computer screens, people are allowed to pontificate on all manner of nonsense, spew hateful and extremist rhetoric, catfish and just troll on, almost without repercussion. Now don't get me wrong, we all know social media has its benefits. Without it, how would you even be watching? Watching this video right now. Social media has even been a tool for authorities in obtaining clues or locating criminals. The internet, vigilante community, and net sleuths have even been invaluable resources in solving major crimes like larceny or even on the darker side of things, murder. But what happens when the savagery of the internet, a missing college student, and one of the darkest days in Boston Marathon history collide? We are going to find out today. But before I get started, welcome to Creepy Cassetti, your place for horror in reality and beyond. I am your host D and if this sort of content fascinates you, please click the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell so you'll never miss out on our bi-weekly chat. I'm going to take a moment to thank everyone who has subscribed and everyone who watches these videos. This channel is truly a passion project for me. My aim is not just to entertain but hopefully in the end inspire people to be kinder to each other or at the very least do no harm. So I appreciate you bestie and I love you to pieces. Um, just a quick disclaimer as well, we are going to be mentioning that in this video, so if you are not in the headspace to deal with this topic, hit me up on another chat. Sunil's disappearance. March of 2013, 23-year-old Brown College student Sunil Chapathi went missing. The last person to see him was a roommate on March 16, 2013. The roommate reached out to Sunil's family, noting that they had not seen or heard from him for a few days. His family, Father Akil, Mother Judy, Sister Sajita, and Brother Ravi, immediately set out to locate the good nature creative and academically gifted saxophonist whose family affectionately nicknamed him Sonny. He was an excellent musician, a hard worker, and incredibly ambitious. Sunil was the youngest of the three children and his brother and sister absolutely adored their baby brother. Some media sources picked up on the story but more needed to be done so the family, albeit reluctantly, used social media to spread the word and help them find Sunil by creating a Facebook page called Help Us Find Sunil Tripathi. But the search dragged on for weeks with no sign of him. The Boston Marathon bomb. Then the unthinkable happened. On April 15, 2013, then unknown Zarnev brothers Tamerlin and Jokar set off two pressure cooker bombs at the finish line of the annual Boston Marathon. The men made a quick escape after causing such destruction, killing three people, injuring around 280 others, with 17 people losing entire limbs in the mayhem. Sunil's brother and sister Sajita and Ravi were taking a moment from the search to cheer on some friends who were running in the marathon. They were very close to the finish line when the bombs went off, but aside from being a little shaken up as anyone would have been, they were okay. 24 hours of hell. But the nightmare would continue for the Chapati family, and it was only going to get worse. On April 18, 2013, the FBI released grainy images of the suspects. After the pictures released, people took to Reddit, creating a thread to help locate similar looking individuals and aid in the search. They were quick to identify the clothing brands of the two men were wearing and started comparing pictures. A college acquaintance of Sunil noticed that he bore a slight resemblance to the younger Zarna brother, Jokar, and posted this theory on Twitter. The tweet was picked up by one Redditor who took the info back to Reddit along with the picture of Sunil and some info about the student pulled up from the family's Facebook page. Redditors quickly located the Facebook page and started leaving terrible messages, threatening the family and making accusations about Sunil's involvement and subjecting them to anti-Islamic sentiments. Never mind that the family doesn't even identify with that fate. But you know how the racist internet jerks are. If you look a little outside of the mainstream they will find a way to villainize you for it. Ravi stated of the time, it progressed to having as many laptops open as possible and deleting every single post. It almost felt like a case study in mob mentality, in a virtual mob mentality. The thousands of messages that flooded in were so disheartening that the family ended up taking the page down just a few hours later. BuzzFeed senior sports writer Eric Malinowski caught wind of the page's termination and posted this tweet to his following that included numerous numerous other journalists. FYI, a Facebook group dedicated to finding Sunil Tripathi, the missing brown student, was deleted this evening. 300 Twitter users retweeted this post. Further fueling the fames was celebrity blogger 
Perez Hilton, who tweeted Sunil's name to his 6 million followers. The at your anon news Twitter news feed connected to Hacker Collective Anonymous even retweeted about Sunil. The story was further spread by misinformed journalists like Politico's Dylan Byers, who sent a tweet stating, wow, Reddit was right about the missing brown student per the police scanner. Suspect identified as Sunil Tripathi. From my understanding, when the police scanner clip was released, people had doubts that Sunil's name was even said. Among the list of journalists involved in the wildfire of misinformation includes Diggs, Ross Newman, Andrew Kaczynski with BuzzFeed, Newsweek's Brian Reese, and NBC's Luke Russert. By 3 a.m. on April 19th, 2013, the internet was convinced that Sunil was the bomber and that Reddit had helped solve the case. When the misguided netizens could no longer spread their hatred via Facebook, they switched to doxing. Someone managed to get Sajita's phone number and she received 58 phone calls between 3 a.m. and 4.15 a.m. Some of the calls were from journalists looking for a story. The others came from ill-wishers. Thankfully, NBC's Pete Williams helped clear Sunil's name and report at around 5.16 a.m. that day, but enough people hadn't gotten the news and some were still still convinced that the missing college student was involved. Groups that had been working with the Chapathis and locating Sunil distanced themselves. Quoting Judy Chapathi, All the sentiment and help we had received to help find Sunil switched over and said he was a terror. And that has to be a terrible thing for any mother to hear about their child, let alone a mother whose son has been missing for weeks and is suddenly being implicated in a terrible crime. At 10.35, the night of April 19th, the Zarnev brothers were identified. They killed an MIT police officer, kidnapped a man who thankfully escaped not long after it, and into a shootout with Watertown police leading to two officers being severely injured and one of them eventually succumbing to his injuries a year later. Tamerlan, the older Zarnev, was shot multiple times times and even run over by his brother as he attempted to escape the scene in a stolen car. A 20-block manhunt but thousands of Watertown's law enforcement to find Joe Carr, causing a lockdown of the entire community, including the transportation system. He was eventually found hiding in the boat of a Watertown resident. The police shot him and then brought him into custody. He was charged, convicted of 30 crimes for the bombing, and his brother died before making it into custody. The aftermath. When when the real suspect was found, journalists who had run with the unsubstantiated story ended up issuing apologies to the Tripathis via phone call, articles, and tweets. Reddit even issued an apology, as they all should have. But what really happened to Sunil? Unfortunately, he suffered from depression, and on April 23rd, 2013, his remains were found floating down the Providence River, and an autopsy revealed that the cause of death was suicide. And I can't even imagine how the Tripathis must have felt. I genuinely feel for them. Especially especially considering that they had tried so hard to help Sunil to talk to him about his depression. They tried numerous interventions and even convinced him to take some time off of school after junior year, but he was not receptive to the idea of getting help. The Chapathis weren't the only ones who tried to help, but friends too, and at some point, things must have just gotten too hard for him, and he decided that that should be the end of things. Sunil's mother remarked in an interview following the mess stating, you know, the irony is Sunil was so gentle and he was a victim of all that damn scandal and he was a victim of his depression and it was so ugly and ugly it absolutely was. This video is short considering all the events and the victims involved and I hope that I did it some justice but if you want to know more, in 2015, three former CNN journalists directed and produced a documentary called Help Us Find Sunil Tripathi. It is an homage to the young man, a way for us to really see the goodness of this man, and it includes exclusive interviews with the Tripathi family. I encourage you all to check it out. I did find it on Pluto TV. It's free on the on-demand section. You'll have to deal with some commercial. If that's cool with you, then it's cool. If you have seen it, let me know in the comments below. Conclusion. I think there is something to be learned from this situation. We live in an era of cancel culture. The court of public opinion is easily swayed. Many people don't even bother with a quick Google search and will take something they find on social media as the honest to God truth. I encourage you to think for yourself and go on your own fact-finding missions. When it comes to mental health, be careful out there, friends. Ask for help when you need it. Don't suffer in silence. There is hope. There are options. In the description below, I've included the number for the suicide prevention hotline and a few other resources. If you're struggling, even if you can't necessarily afford it, sometimes taking a trip to your local health department can get you to the right 
right people. Before we go, I want to send loving energy to the Trapathis and the numerous other victims who were impacted by the Boston Marathon bombing. I know it was almost a decade ago at this point, but the pain of loss never ends. So I hope you all are healing and I wish all of my viewers well. Have an excellent next two weeks. Manifest whatever it is on your heart. I love you to pieces and I am rooting for you. Bye besties.